Hi guys, so today I'm going to look at hands-free live looping in Ableton. There's two main steps to this. Step one is automating the looper on Ableton's timeline. And step two involves using the IAC driver on a Mac and MIDI mapping to arm the tracks automatically. In the description below, I have timestamps of each part of the video and also Windows alternatives to the IAC driver on a Mac. If you find this video helpful, please hit subscribe for more of the same. But for now, let's look at the live loop in action. is down here in audio effects and to get a looper onto a channel you simply drag and drop it on and then you get this so I'll just walk you through what I've done on each of the channels and um, from the live loop demo from the intro of this video so in the drum channel, for instance, if I open up the automation, which is the diagonal arrows up here, or you can press A, um, what you'll see happening is I've got the looper selected in my automation, and I have its state also selected. And then you'll see over here, I have on bar two, it starts to record, and on bar three, it starts to play back. Okay, so if I quickly hit stop and I press play, you'll see now the looper will start to record. And now this playback. And we're on to the bass part. If you want to reset this and go back to start, you just have to make sure you click the automation reset as well. On the bass, you'll see something very similar happen. It records on bar four, and then on bar eight, it plays back the four bar loop that I, I created there. Then similarly, I have four um, bars of a chord progression. So this is live guitar, this is not MIDI. And um, this is live guitar that I played in, and you can see that again in the intro of the track, or intro of this video. So I'm just gonna let it play up to this point, just so you see how it's all working. Keep an eye down here on the loopers and you'll see when it says recording in progress. You'll see that after the drum plays, I haven't duplicated this drum pattern along the timeline. It's simply playing because it's recording whatever is here in this, in this section. So let me just play that from the top. This last track down here, just so you can see it, is just guitar improv. So there's no loop on this channel because this is intended to be um, a guitar improvising over what you put in as the backing loop. If you wanted the drums to stop for a bar, at bar seven for instance, I just drag it down like this and then I play it like this. I bring it back up to play on bar eight. So you could have something like there you see it drops out for the bar and then goes back in the other thing worth mentioning you can obviously pre-mix 
um, to some extent. So if if you knew that the bass sound you wanted is good, but it sounds better with a little bit of saturation, um, and you wanted to tweak some of these things ahead of time, you can do that. Also, you can uh, pan. The second thing we need to do in terms of setup is uh, show you how these tracks are being armed automatically and without me having to press the arm button. Notice that in this track here, there's MIDI notes inserted either just before a loop comes in or exactly when a loop comes in. And I'll explain why some of the, some are on and some are, are just before. Keep an eye on the arm buttons here of the drums, the bass, etc. As I play this, drums are enabled. And then with this next MIDI blob, we have bass enabled. And then if I fast forward to here, you'll see the guitar chords are in. Okay, so uh, how I set this up is I use what is called the ISC driver on a Mac, which is the built-in loopback um, in your audio MIDI setup in Mac. So I'm just gonna show you where to locate that first of all. So command spacebar, audio MIDI setup, double click that. If you go up to window, show MIDI studio, and then you'll have these options here and all kind of MIDI, um, your MIDI keyboards that are connected to your um, computer. This is by default, uh, usually grayed out. So you'll have to go into it, double click it to go into it and turn it on like this. So mine is already online because I obviously I'm, I've, I've used this before. So uh, it will be grayed out by default. So you'll just have to go in and make sure that this is ticked. The d device is online. And once you do that, then when we come back into Ableton, uh, there's a few extra steps you need to do. So if I press command and comma, you get up the preferences and if I go into my MIDI setup, make sure that the IAC driver is set to remote and you need to make sure that the output is set to track. So to explain what MIDI mapping is then, um, is that's the next step in order for this to work. So if you come up here and you press the MIDI, you'll see everything goes blue and now you have the option to uh, control anything that's on the page that's turned blue um, and make it uh, controllable with a MIDI channel here. So MIDI mapping works by if you want the arm track, which is what we do want, to happen when a certain key is pressed on a, on a, on a, on a MIDI keyboard, we would go into MIDI map and then you'll see here what's selected. So. I've got C1 controlling when the drums are both, this track is both selected and this is also C1 here when the track arms. Um, so you can see that over here in the list. C1 is select track on drums and it's also to arm the drums uh, track or mixer. And then I have D1 for the bass, both select track and arm and E1 for the guitar chords. Once you have that map, the last thing you have to do, you have to make sure that the output um, is to the IAC driver so that it loops back effectively. So if I come into my MIDI, C1 is selected, C1 is selected on the last beat of bar one, and that will enable the arm record of the drum loop to happen. Um, with MIDI, I said earlier on, some of these are ahead of the, ahead of the time, and what I've found in my experience is with MIDI particularly, unless you are a computer metronomic with when you come in, it will cut off or shave off the first beat. So if possible, put the MIDI note just before you're due to come in so that it, it, it definitely comes in on the um, on beat one for you. And then you're not missing a kick on the on the one on the downbeat each time um, and same for this uh, MIDI it doesn't 
it doesn't affect it as badly on um, on a on an audio like if you have a live instrument like a guitar. So just a quick recap: uh, IAC driver selected as the output. We've MIDI mapped the notes C1, D1, E1, and F1 respectively to each of the arm and select tracks of the parts we want to loop. 